Time now, 20 minutes past eight. The author Christopher Hitchens has a new book out. It's called God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. And in it, he contends that religion is violent, irrational, intolerant, allied to racism, tribalism and bigotry, invested in ignorance and hostile to free inquiry, contemptuous of women and coercive towards children. He joins us here in the studio. His brother, Peter Hitchens, who's a columnist from the Mail on Sunday, is in Oxford. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Christopher Hitchens, it's quite a series of claims made there. The religion poisons everything. Do you think that religion, that religious faith, has done no good whatsoever? Well, let me put it like this. I've been issuing this as a kind of challenge to uh, the, the various priests and ministers and rabbis and so on who I've been debating in. United States in the last few weeks, you have to, in order to win my prize, so far undisclosed, you have to name a, an ethical statement made or action performed by a believer that could not have been made or performed by a non-believer. And, you, and you're saying that no, no one... one's yet been able to produce one. So it's no good saying that, well, I used to know a jolly nice priest who worked with disabled children and was an absolute sweetie because, I mean... Or, or, or was a, a hero against uh, tyranny or something of this kind, because I could produce just as easily a German communist who died heroically in the name of Joseph Stalin fighting Adolf Hitler. It doesn't, wouldn't vindicate his um, party, would it? Well, Peter Hitchens, as I say, is in Oxford. Can you take up that challenge, Peter Hitchens? Not really, because it's a dud question. The question isn't whether a believer or an, or an unbeliever could have done it. The question is whether the ideas which led the person to do it could have existed without the idea of a, an absolute morality and an absolute good, which atheism denies. And if there is no such thing as absolute good, then, for instance, there is no basis for such things as selfless courage, which have absolutely no objective uh, self-interested justification or indeed for the idea on which our civilization rests which there exists such a thing is that there exists such a thing as law which is above power and which has to be observed however powerful and however rich you may be that went straight past my back atheism does not deny that there is absolute right or wrong um, it's not relativist it can, an atheist can be of course an atheist can be anything can be a, a nihilist but atheism is a, only in my view a a necessary condition for clarity of mind. It's not a sufficient one. It's ridiculous to say no it's absurd. Deciding what it's, absolute let, right and wrong is. No, but nor, no, no, no more does religion do so. But, you, but oh, Chris Hitchens, in your book, you go well, further. No, than just, saying, just, just one second. If I was to ask anyone who's listening to this to imagine a wicked action performed by a religious person for their faith, that was performed because of their faith, everyone could immediately think of an example. It would take no time at all. Religion makes people behave worse all the time and often preaches wicked things. For example, it's founded on a lie, the lie that we, could, that we can escape death. Peter, Peter, you don't it's want to wrong lie. Uh, let, let, let Peter respond to that. Well, you just changed the subject. Uh, the, the subject is what is the origin of any absolute idea of right and wrong. Human solidarity. And athe athe atheism denies that there is any origin for such an idea. All ideas of right and wrong which atheists can come up with, come up with are, are situational, ad hoc, and designed for the times, and they're alterable. The you point you would just the have po to... The point about, the point, the point, the point about the, the, the theist position is that it maintains that there is an absolute source of good, and that absolute source cannot be overcome by any particular worldly need that you have at any given time. The problem with people is that when they are left to their own devices, they will always find excuses for doing things which suit them. This involves the absurd belief that, say, the Jewish people wandering towards Sinai were under the impression that murder and perjury and theft were all right until they were told by God these things are not kosher. It's in Asian people to know that these things are wrong. It's if part of our evolution uh, as humans uh, to, to, know, to know that so solidarity and mutuality are essential. They, uh, but we all, know, we, all know in, we all know in modern advance... We don't do it to please... We do not do the right yeah. action in order to please a celestial dictator, which is, no, in we, my we, view, we, an immoral basis for morality. 
we recategorize actions which suit us. We all know that killing babies is wrong, and yet we kill 186,000 of them every year in the womb in this country alone, uh, and we call it abortion, and instead of babies, we call them fetuses to, to, to get around this problem. And there are many, many other things we do, actions of betrayal and dishonesty, which we tell ourselves are all right, because that's the way with, in, in which human beings evade the, the supreme the being. The supreme the being mandates, the supreme being mandates like gentle the mutilation family. of babies. I don't believe Something so, no morally that. normal parent would consider doing. Again, you um, change the subject. No, I'm you sorry. The source of the authority. Address, you, can't, you can't address, and no atheist ever has addressed, nor ever will, this simple problem that if you, if, if you don't believe in any kind of supreme authority, then ultimately you, ha you make your own mind up about what's good and bad, and that leads to the consequences we all know. But that, that would mean, logically, wouldn't it, that if there was no objective evidence that could be provided for the existence of this dictator who you worship, you'd have to say, well, then I've, I don't feel, have any longer any moral promptings. A perfectly no, nihilistic I, conclusion. No, it's a matter of it's a moral matter of chaos preference. results from from, then, from your first you, you, premise. You can d you can decide uh, whether you want to believe that we are the, the products of random chaos or, or whether we live in a in a created, ordered, purposeful universe. Having taken that decision, you can then you can then try and discover what it is that we're supposed to do. Uh, if, if there is no, no one's no one's offering any evidence again, you're you're changing the subject because you no, can't. Stay with well, that well, you well, can't well, I'm staying with it. I'm, 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 I'm going to come in here, if I may, and change the subject slightly to to ask both of you whether you have a theory as to why the two of you who were brought up presumably in the same way have come to such completely different conclusions, Christopher. Well, I don't, there's nothing remarkable at all in, in any two people having uh, totally divergent opinions. I certainly don't think it's very rare within families. But on religion, on politics, the two of you are poles apart. Peter, do you have a... This doesn't help to sell my book at well, all. Well, there, 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 there is a simple answer to this. A terrible we change both, of subject there. We were, we, were, we, were, we were both brought up with independence of mind. Independence of mind doesn't necessarily lead, lead you to agree with each other, but it does lead you to take positions as a result of thinking about them and as a result of consideration and experience rather than following conventional wisdom. I and think you, you'll find that no, neither of us follows conventional wisdom that indeed. much we definitely have in common. And you've always taken a decision not to review your brother's books, and yet you made an exception in this case. Why? Well, I, I don't think he's any more expert on the subject than I am. I, I, I wouldn't dream of taking him on, on Henry Kissinger. I'm sure he knows more and cares more about Henry Kissinger than I do. But I, I think on the question of, of, of whether there should be uh, religion in the world and whether, for instance, it should be classified as child abuse and therefore effectively stamped out, I think I can both disagree with him and be as knowledgeable on the subject as he is. Peter Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens, thank you both.